Lieutenant Sheriff is brutally assassinated in cold blood. She opened the front door. His body was there. He'd been shot multiple times. What? What do you mean he didn't make it? Unbelievable. Was this murder an act of revenge? Every shell casing had been fired by a 9mm, modified to shoot multiple rounds of ammunition. It was an intended hit. Or is this a conspiracy that runs much deeper? The audacity of having a list of people that you are now targeting to be killed that was incredible to me. We had suspicions, but who did not want to talk? We were at a dead end. People were concerned that this might not be a case that would ever be solved. When the truth is finally revealed, it sends shockwaves throughout Atlanta law enforcement. This was something that was out of a movie. This can't be for real, right? city. DeKalb County is the neighboring county. And so a lot of people who didn't want to move to the big city of Atlanta, they loved moving to DeKalb County because it was so close and incredibly progressive. And much like the area itself, the greater Atlanta law enforcement community has a long history of progressive milestones. Atlanta was definitely uh, more accepting of minorities as leaders in law enforcement you begin to see more african-american males for example as sheriffs in some of the smaller counties one of them was 46 year old derwin brown who in 2000 became the second african-american sheriff elected in DeKalb county derwin brown had a long distinguished career in law enforcement 23 years with the DeKalb police department very active in his community Everyone knew that Mr. Brown was all about being upright, honest. My father, he wasn't the police officer that just wanted to come in because a crime had taken place. He wanted to prevent a crime from taking place. He was truly a community police officer. In 2000, Durham was running against the incumbent sheriff, Sidney Dorsey. He eventually won in a runoff. Citizens of DeKalb County said, this is who we want. But before he can take the oath of office, Derwin Brown's term as sheriff is tragically cut short. On a rainy December night in 2000, Phyllis Brown is inside her Decatur home, waiting for her husband Derwin to arrive. She heard shots fired. She thought it was coming from next door, and she picked up the phone to call 911. That's when she realized that her husband was coming home. And she ran out the door, and when she opened the front door, his body was there. He'd been shot multiple times. First responders arrive on the scene and rush a severely injured Derwin to the hospital as officials from all over the Atlanta area are alerted of the shooting. This lady had called to tell me that Derwin had gotten shot. My thoughts were, maybe she can be shot in the arm or leg. At least he can survive. When we got to the hospital, there's just so many people. I kept saying, can I go back and see him? Can I go back and see him? Nobody would really give me an answer. And his best friend comes out. He was like, he didn't make it. And I'm like, what? You know, what do you mean he didn't make it? And he was like, he didn't make it. And it was just unbelievable. There were uh, 11 shots that had been fired into the body. Three of those were fatal. It just sounded like a dream, something that you just couldn't Im imagine. He was truly my superman. I just, he was invincible to me. So this was truly unbelievable to me. While Derwin's loved ones processed the news of his death, 
Technicians at the crime scene recover any evidence they can find. We went to the crime scene. It was pouring down Georgia rain. It's a hard rain. So finding evidence it would be very difficult. Rain, uh, inclement weather, any of that will affect a crime scene. If you have a body, uh, blood, rain will wash a lot of that away. I remember distinctly seeing Derwin's leather coat and a dozen roses on the ground. There was no gun. I noticed that there were multiple red flags, and I asked one of the crime scene forensic investigators what the red flag meant, and she said, that's a shell casing. And I was shocked at the number of shell casings they had already found. In a situation where you only have a limited amount of evidence on the scene, we do what we call a neighborhood canvas. As people, you know, did you see anything? Did you hear anything? We heard the shots, and uh, we thought it was firecrackers. Maybe some of the children playing in the neighborhood with the firecrackers. We had no idea actually what had taken place. From my understanding, it was not that much. We quickly eliminated crime and passion. It did, did not fit at all. And then you look at what's it a potential robbery. Well, robbers really don't show up at 11 o'clock at night at someone's home and shoot 16 rounds of ammunition. What they usually want is just to steal the goods and leave. Nothing was taken. This wasn't someone just happening to want to rob someone. With the number of shell cases that were found, a lot of times when someone's trying to cover their tracks, they take those, but they left those behind. It was an intended hit, and then the question is why and who would have the motivation to do that. The murder of an elected sheriff isn't being taken lightly by the tight-knit Atlanta law enforcement community, and their response is rapid. When there is a homicide of note, the law enforcement community comes together very quickly to solve it. When there is a homicide of another law enforcement officer, it is stepped up exponentially. Sheriff Lake Brown was gunned down in his driveway. Sheriff Lake Brown was assassinated. Almost instantly, we formed a group with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the Cap County Police Department, and my office. The task force is the largest formed in the area since the Atlanta child murders 20 years prior. And they get right to work, starting with what events led up to Derwin's death. December 15th was not only the day that my father was assassinated, it was also my mother's birthday. The morning of December 15th, when my father graduated from the Sheriff's Academy, so he was actually complete with what he needed to do to take office. Dinner was a celebration, so there were a lot of people that were at the graduation and some that weren't, but they all came together to celebrate, you know, that it was like we were there. We had finally made it to the ending point of where we wanted to be. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to share this occasion with me. It's been a long struggle. Later, Phyllis went home. Dorian went in another direction to quickly get a dozen roses to get for his wife for her birthday and then uh, went home. Phyllis never saw those roses. They had laid for him, waiting for him to come home so they can assassinate him. There's nothing else you can call that. This is someone who really wanted this individual to no longer exist. And we started to wonder who would want Mr. Brown dead. Officials have to consider that the target may not have just been Derwin, but rather the Atlanta law enforcement community at large. We didn't know what to make of it. Was there open season now on sheriffs? The day after the murder, Chief Moody told me that they had put a special detail for Phyllis and the family. Even the outgoing sheriff, Sidney Dorsey, got protection. It was a very scary time when you think about the fact that law enforcement needed law enforcement in order to keep them safe. You wonder about the brazenness of someone who would dare to murder someone that high in law enforcement. The line had been crossed, and if it had been crossed once, might it be crossed again? The task force must also ask themselves, could this be a case of revenge? You figured this must have been someone that he locked up during his career. Many people thought that perhaps it was somebody coming to settle a score. Derwin had sent out a letter about a week earlier to 33 employees of the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department telling them that the day he took office, they would be terminated. 
he was handing out pink slips, and these were people who had a bone to pick. I think it was a very dangerous move to make. Atlanta's law enforcement community is on high alert as they race to find the killer who brutally assassinated the Cab County Sheriff elect, Derwin Brown. The news that Derwin Brown had been killed. It, it is something that really takes your breath away. There was a you know bright star on the horizon uh, in, in DeKalb County, and now all of a sudden he's gone. If we had known that Derwin had enemies to the point where they wanted to kill him, wouldn't have been caught by himself. Detectives dig deeper into Derwin's prolific career of putting criminals behind bars. Is it possible one of them sought revenge? Many people thought that perhaps it was someone um, that he had interfaced with. And honestly, it really could have been any one of those people that he had locked up over the course of his 23-year career. And the alleged murder weapon appears to support this theory. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation told us that Michelle Casey Zaman had been fired by the same weapon, uh, nine millimeter, modified so that they could shoot multiple rounds of ammunition beyond the typical six rounds. When a gun like this is modified, typically is modified by gang members or, or drug dealers. Daryl Brown, he came into contact with murderers, rapists, drug dealers, gang members, probably on a daily basis. Was it someone that, you know, he had put in jail or another family member or whatever could have done? But looking into Derwin's past cases, no one stands out as a criminal looking for revenge. We look back at people that Derwin had investigated, but that was a dead end. The task force is now one week into the investigation, and as they continue to scour for leads, the city of Atlanta mourns Derwin Brown as he is laid to rest. The church was packed uh, with dignitaries. It was CNN, it was on every station. My father was a soldier. He was not afraid to let the truth be known. And the truth is known, believe me, it is. It was amazing to see the support, see that love, and to see how many officers from all across. It wasn't just DeKalb County. You had officers from everywhere that came. It was just so powerful to me. And we wanted our show of solidarity to be there so that we could say, the citizens of, of DeKalb County, that this state's sheriffs are here. Derwin's burial clothing is a devastating reminder of the hero DeKalb County has lost. The night my father was assassinated, my mom left dinner a little bit earlier. You know, she just kind of played off like she was tired and she wanted to go home. But reality, she wanted to surprise my dad. His uniform that he had made had come in. And so she wanted to get home before him so that when he walked through the door, would be the first thing that he saw. The uniform specially made for Sheriff Brown was put to use. Unfortunately, was it had to be put into the ground instead of put into service. It is a fitting tribute for such a respected public servant. But with Derwin's killer still on the loose, a cloud hangs over the service. I wish that Derwin could have been there to see the people who cared about him. At the same time, I was also there as a professional knowing that this man's death, ultimately, I could be responsible for the prosecution of whoever did this. I had the uh, opportunity to be one of the ones to speak at his, his funeral. And I said, the killer is right here. Attended the funeral, they are, most time they are. Is it possible that Derwin's killer lies within his closest inner circle? Detectives dive deeper into Derwin's life and career in on his recent electoral victory against incumbent sheriff Sidney Dorsey. Sidney Dorsey, a lot of people knew as a homicide detective, and a lot of people knew him in the city of Atlanta, in the Cab County, knew him. He was a part of that investigative team for the child murders in the city of Atlanta. 20 years earlier, dozens of children were murdered in the Atlanta area. Dorsey played a key role in bringing Wayne Williams, their alleged killer, to justice. The detectives and officers involved in finally arresting Wayne Williams and getting him convicted were held in high regard, as was Sidney Dorsey. 
After serving and retiring from the Atlanta Police Department, he ran for DeKalb County Sheriff. He overwhelmingly won, and he was a, the first black sheriff of DeKalb County. I saw Sidney change in a number of ways. I began to hear rumors about the way that he was dealing with things. When we see that the sheriff is not living up to the honor, there might be somebody else that's willing to come in and say, I'll take on the challenge. Disgusted with the rumors of corruption during Sidney Dorsey's tenure, Derwin Brown decided to run against him in 2000. When Derwin Brown came out saying, I'm going to clean up corruption, I'm going to clean up the jail, he was talking about all of the corruption that was propagated by Sidney Dorsey. The race was very contentious between Mr. Brown and Mr. Dorsey. Mr. Brown just eked into a runoff. In the runoff, Mr. Brown won about thousands of votes. Sidney Dorsey was infuriated that he had lost. I mean, think about who he had been to this community for years. And to be narrowly defeated, it, it was too much for him to take. Would someone who had been defeated in a political election have such hate and revenge in spite that they would want their opponent murdered? I was having a hard time grasping that, but we had to look at it. DeKalb County investigators are digging into the professional life of the assassinated sheriff-elect, Derwin Brown. They're exploring the possibility that incumbent Sheriff Sidney Dorsey, who Derwin recently defeated, may have reason to want Derwin dead. Dorsey came to mind, just remembering and knowing how that election went. But it was still unbelievable. Detectives questioned Dorsey regarding his whereabouts the night of the murder. We'd interviewed Sheriff Dorsey, and it was clear he was at home with his wife when the murder occurred. I see him as being an extended member of my family. And that he was nowhere near Doran Brown's house. With a solid alibi and no physical evidence connecting him to the murder, police clear Sheriff Dorsey. But investigators learn that Dorsey wasn't the only one who was losing his job because of Derwin's win. Derwin won because people were disgusted at what was happening in the Cap County Sheriff's Department. They were embarrassed about it. It reflected bad on the county. It is not at all uncommon for people to say, I'm going to clean up in any election. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna to want to bring in their own team. Alongside of me, for many soldiers who believed in my vision, who believed that righteousness was the team discovers that Derwin had begun the process of cleaning house even before his first day on the job. Derwin had sent out a letter about a week earlier to 33 employees of the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department telling them that the day he took office, they would be terminated. Pulling in a professional hit, the DeKalb County District Attorney said there's a list of people who wanted Brown dead. It was a little dicey on his part to send that out to signal that so early before he'd actually taken office. That's really flexing before you even get in the door. But those in his inner circle know Derwin sent the letters with good intentions. He said, do you think that I should wait two weeks and then just walk up and tell them you're fine? Or do you think I should give them a two weeks notice? I said, Derwin, would you want somebody to walk up to you on the day they're going to fire you? And Derwin said, Jeff, I never thought about it like that. So Derwin agreed to give him a two weeks notice. Derwin Brown had his reasons for sending those letters, but I think it was a very dangerous move to make. There's too much time and too much opportunity for sabotage between the time that you send that letter out and the time you actually take office. A lot of devilment could have been done, but that was Derwin's choice. We thought that was the first place that we could look to see who these people were if they had any real motivation other than revenge and hate, and where were they at the time of the murder? He was handing out pink slips, and these were people who had a bone to pick. Investigators begin to make their way down Derwin's termination list. This crime was too well planned to just be a spiteful murder. It was not something that was done out of a 
you know, I've had a few drinks. I'm going to kill this son of a bitch because he's going to fire me. It was not that kind of murder. And every person was interviewed who was on that list to be fired. We could not find anyone that we could pinpoint that was at the crime scene. And as they take themselves off, one by one by one, you begin to narrow in uh, who exactly you're looking for, who exactly you're looking at. Name after name is crossed off the list until they get to one very particular person. Patrick Covey was a deputy that we were looking at very stringently as being involved in the corruption of the jail and that he possibly would have a motivation for killing Dewar Brown. In that world of law enforcement, he was pretty high-ranking and made a whole lot of money doing it. Derwin was set to fire Cuffey after he discovered that Cuffey was filing fraudulent overtime hours with the county and collecting extra pay. One of the programmers in the billing department called me and said, Mr. Cuffey had all these overtime hours and it's not humanly possible for this person to be working this many hours. We are here to serve citizens of our counties and we cannot do that with any shadows any sense that we are mismanaging or that we're personally benefiting from being in the office of sheriff patrick cuffey had done well for himself and so not having a job with the new administration he had reason to be concerned and uh, had something to lose and there is one glaring detail about patrick cuffey investigators cannot ignore mr cuffey worked for the outgoing sheriff, Sidney Dorsey. Everybody's on guard. Everybody's antenna are up. Walked in the door. He said, J. Tom, don't ask me any questions, but you need to start carrying a firearm. You need to wear a bulletproof vest, and you need security as much as possible. It's been over a month since DeKalb County Sheriff-elect Derwin Brown was viciously gunned down in front of his home, and detectives are still searching for answers. Everybody was still wondering what happened. How was this able to, to happen? I mean, this was something that was out of a movie. This can't be for real, right? After reviewing the list of people that Derwin planned to fire, the Atlanta task force has set their sights on Sheriff's deputy, Patrick Cuffey, and his connection to outgoing Sheriff, Sidney Dorsey. He had very, very close ties to the Sheriff, and I was wanting to know where Mr. Cuffey was at the time of the shooting. Investigators bring Patrick Cuffey in for questioning. Patrick Cuffey at the time when I interviewed him, he was very arrogant. He didn't want to answer my questions. It was very confrontational with him. We interviewed Cuffey about his whereabouts at the time of the murder. Cuffey said that he was with three other gentlemen and that they were talking about what they were going to do once Mr. Brown took office because they were losing their jobs. One was Melvin Walker, who was a deputy in the sheriff's department as well, and then David Ramsey and Paul Skyers, who worked in the sheriff's security firm. They also questioned Cuffey about the man's connection to Sheriff Sidney Dorsey. He, in my terms, bowed up. He said the sheriff was a father figure to him. The sheriff had taken him under his wings, that he had done nothing wrong, and the sheriff had done nothing wrong. We had suspicions of Cuffey's unusual behavior, but he did not want to talk. With Cuffey remaining tight-lipped, investigators bring the other three men in for questioning. We had corroborating alibis. These four men were together at the time the murder occurred. What we think somebody may have done is totally irrelevant. The law requires probable cause, and we had no evidence. As a result, they had to be let go. As much as law enforcement thought that they had the people involved, they didn't have enough to keep them. People were concerned that this might not be a case that would ever be solved. Despite the setback, the task force is convinced Patrick Covey knows more than he is letting on. But before they can dig deeper into Covey, DA J. Tom Morgan receives a disturbing warning. 
after we started focusing on Cuffy, the private defense attorney, who had been one of my top prosecutors, called me and said he needed to see me. And he said it's private. He walked in the door and he said, J. Tom, don't ask me any questions, but you need to start carrying a firearm. You need to wear a bulletproof vest and you need security as much as possible. I knew as an attorney that the only way you can break confidentiality is if you believe a client is going to harm another person or kill another person. Because of attorney-client privilege, the lawyer can't divulge details about his source. But the chilling advice has the entire task force on edge. Everybody's on guard. Everybody's you know, antenna are up. This is something that we all need to be careful about now. As the tension builds, the suspect list runs dry. Now 10 weeks into the investigation, the case is growing cold. We were at a dead end in the investigation. It felt like they didn't have any real leads, and we felt like it was no movement going on. It was insane to me. But in March of 2001, three months after Derwin's murder, a seemingly unrelated shooting brings investigators a surprising break in the case from an all too familiar name. So ironically, Patrick Cuffey is involved in a whole nother case, uh, a drug case that ultimately ended in a murder. There was a shootout. It was a drug deal gone bad. There was a drug dealer who apparently had been killed in the shootout. This crime took place in Cuffey's yard. Cuffey was right in the middle of it, and now he was charged with felony murder, which is life in prison. When law enforcement came for him for that case, they used that as an opportunity to see if he would cooperate in the Derwin Brown murder. There was a murder that took place, and so now Cuffey wanted to start talking because he needed to get off. And that's really when the pieces on our end came together. Facing serious jail time, Patrick Cuffey makes a deal with the DA for immunity. He also asks for a lighter charge in the drug case. We arranged to meet Patrick Cuffey at a location in another county. I needed a private place where no one would know who was there. And there was a trailer out in the woods. I read him his Miranda warnings and we questioned him for about two and a half hours. Once Patrick Cuffey started talking to law enforcement, he dropped the bombshell that it was Sidney Dorsey who had planned this entire assassination plot. The task force in Atlanta has just had a major breakthrough in the Derwin Brown murder investigation when prime suspect Patrick Cuffey fingers incumbent Sheriff Sidney Dorsey as the mastermind behind the horrific assassination. Patrick Cuffey and incriminating evidence against Sidney Dorsey. Cuffey said that he got in a phone call from Dorsey and that Dorsey asked him to come over to his house. So when he got there, Dorsey looked very disheveled. He was still in his bathrobe. In a very odd, almost made-for-TV moment, Sidney Dorsey writes down on a piece of paper to kill Derwin Brown, shows Cuffy that, and then eats the paper. And it was no movie. That happened. Dorsey asked him who he thought would help carry out something like this, and Cuffy mentioned three names, Melvin Walker, Paul Skyers, and David Ramsey. Dorsey knew all three of these, either because of a security firm or a sheriff's department. They are the same three men that confirmed Cuffy's alibi for the night of Derwin Brown's murder. Sidney Dorsey was a man that had a lot of power. He told them what he wanted done, and they followed through. They discussed various ways in which to carry out this assassination. They all agree that Skyers would be the getaway driver, Melvin Walker would be the actual shooter, that David Ramsey and Patrick Cuffey would accompany him, and they would take guns with them in case they needed it. 
and according to Cuffy, Sidney Dorsey gave the assassins a strict deadline. Dorsey firmly believed that if Brown was assassinated before he was sworn into office, the judges would appoint Sidney Dorsey to be the interim sheriff. In Sidney's mind, if Derwin is gone, then maybe I emerge as the best person to, to lead the agency. I won the election once, and maybe I could put back in a position of power. Cuffey told us that on the night of the murder, everything went exactly as planned. They ran up to him, and Melvin Walker, with the Intertech 9, fired the weapon many, many, many times. Said they ran through the woods, got back in the car, left, and went straight to Cuffey's home. And Patrick Cuffey reveals that Sidney Dorsey had no plans to stop with Derwin. There is a hit list that Sidney Dorsey had. The audacity of having a list of people that you are now targeting to be killed that was incredible to me. That hit list included the DA, J. Tom Morgan. It included the public safety director, Thomas Brown. It even included local reporter, Dale Cardwell. Cuffey said that I was next on the list because of my investigation of the corruption. Investigators are stunned by Cuffey's story, but with his history of lying to police, they need additional witnesses and physical evidence to back it up. Cuffey told us how David Ramsey had gotten the gun and Paul Skyers had thrown the gun into a sewer. I asked Cuffey, would Paul Skyers be willing to come in and testify under the same agreement? He called Skyers and Skyers came in he corroborated everything Cuffey said, and Skyers eventually led us to the sewer where we were able to retrieve the weapon. It was an Intertech 9 with a large magazine that could hold 20 rounds of ammunition. It had rusted to such a degree that the GBI could not do forensics on it, but it certainly fit the type of weapon that killed Durham Brown. And that's when a murder warrant was issued for Sidney Dorsey. Almost one year after Derwin Brown was assassinated in front of his home, Sidney Dorsey is arrested for his murder. The sentiment of the public was just utter disappointment. This was a man who had been considered by many to be a hero. And the thought that he could be responsible for gunning down someone who had just defeated him was just really hard to accept. Melvin Walker and David Ramsey are also arrested for their parts in the assassination. Walker, Ramsey, and Dorsey maintain their innocence. Patrick Cuffey and Paul Skyers are both granted immunity in exchange for their testimony. I was hoping that everybody was involved in the murder of Durbin Brown would be prosecuted, but sometimes you have to make those deals to get an indictment. As a prosecutor, there probably is no higher case than you trying to find the killers of the sheriff of the very county where you serve as DA. The stakes were so high. The trials, unlike any in the history of Atlanta law enforcement, begin in March of 2002. We tried Walker and Ramsey first with the motivation that they were going to get better jobs in the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department if they participated in this murder. Patrick Cuffey was a key witness, but he had some credibility issues on the stand. Because his character was so flawed, that jury just couldn't buy it. The defense team for Walker and Ramsey did a good job of making Patrick Cuffey look like a liar and would say anything to get out of the felony murder count. So the immunity agreement was a big problem. The jury announced that they were not guilty. And it was devastating to us. When Walker and Ramsey were acquitted, I was flabbergasted. They had faith in the case, so I'm going along with their faith. I don't even understand how it could go the way it went, period. With Sidney Dorsey's hitmen exonerated and two more granted immunity, the people of Atlanta worry that nobody will be held accountable for Sheriff Derwin Brown's murder. The public was very disappointed. The next morning, the Atlanta paper said that I made a deal with the devil and the devil was winning. 
the dynamics changed completely. What appeared to be a, a slam dunk was not a slam dunk. And now the question was, were we going to be able to convict Dorsey of anything? After the shocking acquittal of Melvin Walker and David Ramsey in the murder of Sheriff-elect Derwin Brown, everyone in DeKalb County is anxious to see if the alleged mastermind, Sheriff Sidney Dorsey, will be convicted for his part in the assassination plot. From the public's perspective, if the prosecutors couldn't get Walker and Ramsey, they certainly weren't going to be able to get Sidney Dorsey. And so the public's confidence it started to wane. We were devastated, number one. We were absolutely concerned that Dorsey may get off as well. We had a meeting with J. Tom Morgan, and I did voice my opinion. The first strategy was to add a corruption account to the indictment. That enabled us to tell a story about the corruption at the jail and the motivation for Dorsey to kill the sheriff elect. Going into it, we knew we had good shot at convicting Mr. Dorsey of corruption. We did not know whether or not we were going to be able to convict him of murder. As the trial kicks off, the tension in the courthouse is palpable, and the pressure is on for the prosecutors to get it right this time. Two and a half years of publicity has moved Dorsey's trial to Albany in South Georgia. And according to some court observers familiar with the case, it might not be enough. Well, the atmosphere of this is something that I've never been involved with. There was media from all over the country there. There were a lot of spectators in the courtroom. People could not believe that this had happened. Unlike the other trial, we had witnesses that corroborated everything we were saying. The owner of a bonding company told us that she'd had a conversation with Dorsey, and she asked what was Mr. Dorsey going to do uh, when he was no longer sheriff, and Mr. Dorsey told her that Doran would not be around. And she said that Dorsey put his finger to his temple and pulled the trigger and didn't say anything else. That was a lot. It's a lot for the community to withstand. It was, it was a lot to understand that a life was taken because they were so afraid of losing the power that they had, um, that they were willing to go to those lengths. But will it be enough to get a conviction? After three days of deliberation, the jury came back and they had a verdict. The judge looked at the verdict form and asked me to stand up and read it in front of the courtroom and millions of people who were watching it on live television. Count one was murder. We, the jury, find the defendant as to count one, guilty. Guilty. Count two, corruption, guilty. The moment we heard the verdict, it was, we had a whole, you know, woosa. It was a sigh of relief that finally somebody gets it. He's going to go down for this. When the verdict came back, Sydney was just stoic. People were looking for some sort of reaction, whether it be disappointed or whether it be remorseful. But the public got nothing, and that did not help. As to count one murder, you were found guilty. I sentence you to life. The judge sentences Sidney Dorsey to life in prison, plus 20 years. At the um, sentencing for Dorsey, I told him I couldn't forgive him. I, I just don't understand how he could do it. Like, you took a very good person away, not just from us, but from the community. I was so relieved. It had a profound effect on me because I started thinking, is it any justice for one to do the right thing? While it's a huge victory, there is still the lingering feeling that alleged assassins Melvin Walker and David Ramsey should also be in prison for Derwin's death. Several months later, the feds indicted Walker and Ramsey on depriving Derwin Brown of his civil rights, and they are now serving life in federal prison for the assassination of Derwin Brown. When they got them the second time around, I thought the circle has now been completed. We now have the totality of this case. It will take a while for the shadow of the Sidney Dorsey case to, to go away. It will have an indelible stain on law enforcement in the state of Georgia. In the end, Derwin Brown fulfilled his promise to rid DeKalb County of the corruption caused by Sidney Dorsey. And in turn, the community continues to celebrate 
his life and career. They had named a police precinct after Durham Brown, and there's a bridge there on Glenwood Road that's named uh, in his honor. In addition to South Precinct being a Derwin Brown Memorial Bridge, we started a nonprofit organization, the Derwin and Phyllis Brown Foundation, where people really knew him, loved him, and definitely want to uphold that standard of who he was. My father was the rock. He was the pillar of the entire family. My father was a stand-up guy. That is part of his legacy of who he was. So I think he's you know, just smiling, and I think he's saying, okay, keep moving forward. You're on the right path. 